Why? What? 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 When we first decided to make the tank for World of Tanks, we started looking everywhere for how to make tank tracks. So I found this guy's blog, and he actually does a really good job making a Sherman tank. I took a lot of inspiration from his drivetrain. I changed a lot of things around, like the bogey arms and power transmission. So once I had a pretty good idea of how to begin, I went into SolidWorks and started on the first design of the tank. I was pretty happy with it, but I wanted to make a few changes, so I started the second design. In this I added some more plywood, and then I ended up not really liking this one either. So here's the final model that we actually used, and for the most part we didn't really make any changes other than these bearing blocks got deleted just because they were unnecessary and these bearing blocks moved to the top. We cut a couple test pieces just to make sure everything fit perfectly. So then we started CNCing the parts and the first that I used it was just a normal aluminum end mill which caught the wood on fire. Well I thought that might happen, I was hoping it wouldn't. Router bit broke, it did well for the first three well, first two, but the third one ended up breaking that. So finally, uh, got everything adjusted right. We were just using normal router bits, and they seem to work pretty well since they are designed for cutting wood. The only thing is, after every once in a while, I would break a router bit. And what do we have here? Bit number three. I was already on the second piece of plywood. I got a decent amount of parts done so far, so I might shove this one further down in the collet and use it till it breaks the second time. Fun stuff. Go again. Oh my god, I walk away for one second. And you do this? What is this? Lots of stuff to glue. We're doubling up everything. These are already doubled up and gluing. We still have all of these left to glue. Did we really just buy a wheelchair? Buy a wheelchair. I'm not even disabled yet, at least physically. That was really quick. Yeah. We killed that in what, 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, that was really fast. And everything's like real nice and plug and play. Like look at these, these look at these giant angle grinders. Ankle grinders. Wow, everything is so heavy. So we took them out and now it has air codes. Yep. So we have to troubleshoot flashing light wheelchair air codes. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about this, bruh. So all that was wrong is, we forgot is it to was out of ranks. gear. That's dumb. Whee! Ooh, it sounds fast. These 1x2s will be the tank treads. We just have to rip the sides down on the table saw and turn them into these. The tracks fit nice in here. The nylon webbing goes over it, which fits nicely in this slot. When this top plate is screwed in over it, the holes are aligned so that we are able to run the screws in centered to every track. Oh yeah, that worked way better. Are those tracks? Peter, it looks so cool. Yeah, it does. We had to screw these into a couple different intervals, but <laughs> it works so good. Tanks are all the hard work. 
We started cutting out all the metal for the frame and then had to weld it all together. Whoa! Oh, we're missing, we're missing some stuff. We went on to make the centering blocks. It was just a lot of cutting, then putting them in a jig to pre-drill the pilot hole. Afterwards, we just had to screw one to every track piece. Oh my god, oh my god, I think it stopped! Oh. <laughs> it <laughs> works! No, man, that's so cool! Oh my god! Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, okay, Sam. Well, it looks like... <sighs> looks like that's gonna be a problem. No. So what's going on now? So pretty much almost every single one of these blocks was ripping out. Ooh, what are those? Ultralight wings? Wow. We have these spacers here, which don't pose any problem. But when we added the screw to screw them in to the track, these are actually a little bit uh, thicker in real life. So the screw that actually went into these started catching the bogey arms, which caused all of these alignment pieces to uh, start ripping out. One of the main problems with the original nylon belts was the way we mounted them, you could have a huge twisting force where the nylon would let the tracks go side to side. Originally, we were going to use conveyor material, but Granger had an eight day lead time, and there was no way since eight days was actually further than our deadline. But luckily, while we were picking up some of the pillow blocks at Rural King, we found this uh, conveyor material and we were able to switch over to new tracks. Of course, new tracks changed the geometry of the spacing of the treads. Since the nylon was on the inside of the treads, the spacing was closer together and the conveyor belts on the outside, it lets the spacing be further apart. Well, this had a really smooth ride and now, these are spaced where they're almost all hitting the gaps at the same time and they're going deeper into it. So it's a lot rougher ride where you're going down further and <laughs> hitting a lot harder. If you notice in Peter's video, you'll see us kind of bouncing a lot more when we're riding this finalized design. I want to go back eventually and replace these tracks again with a four inch conveyor, which would be the same width as this and they would fit right on the inside of those gears. Well, those gears. These gears are actually spaced four inches, so the seat belt went right inside of them. But then when we got rid of the seat belt, we had to add all these plywood spacers so that the centering blocks would be able to do their job. It seemed to work a lot better because it gives the track more clearance and they're wood glued on so there's no way of twisting notice these blocks are way smaller than the originals we actually ripped the board one uh, first long ways to make it uh, shorter and then we cut them smaller angled them at the original 45 degree bevel instead of the 30 which is the same as the treads themselves that just saved us a lot of work doing everything the same but it didn't end up working out the other problem with this is the batteries are almost shot so we're gonna buy larger deep cycles that way we'll actually be able to use it more than about 15 minutes. So working on this tank was an awesome opportunity. Normally when Peter does a project, he just calls me when it's done and I'll come over and help him film a couple things. But on this project, I got to work on it pretty much from start to finish. Now I'm working with Peter full time. I ended up kind of quitting my job, at least the full time portion. Now I'm just a part time consultant. So I have a lot more time to work on this channel and it really is growing. So, if you don't want me to starve, please like, comment, subscribe. Anything helps out. And I'll see you guys next time.